Hi everybody, this is Vineet. Uh, I'm the CEO and founder of teleportme.com and I welcome you to the first video series interview uh, with Michael Tai of 360rumors.com. If you haven't heard of 360rumors.com, it is the premier website for your 360 camera reviews, accessories, and a whole lot of new news that is coming out in the 360 industry. I've been a huge fan of Michael Tai since he started this great journey in 2016 and I am so happy to have him on board. Really wanted to dig into uh, you know, some of the stuff he's been doing and why he's doing it, his background, his journey as an immigrant uh, into the US, uh, his passion for photography, his passion for 360, what really opened up his mind to this amazing world of 360 photography and a lot more amazing things. Uh, if you wanna know more, go ahead and watch the entire video there are some cut parts that are in separate videos if you're interested. And if you haven't heard of 360rumors.com, definitely check out, the link is in the bio. Hey Mike, uh, thanks a lot for coming on this uh, new, I don't know if it's a video podcast or a video series, but I just wanted to uh, take the time to talk to you and know more about you. You know, you're everywhere sure. on Facebook, on, on the web about 360 cameras and 360 photography, but uh, nobody really knows who you are. You know, uh -huh. You're this uh, this guy who moderates all the groups, extremely influential. Uh, I mean, in in, in a uh, in a real sense, you're you are an influencer. You know, this this term gets thrown around a lot these days. But I think uh, a lot of people, you know, kind of look at your opinion and look at your content. Thank uh, you. In, in a positive light. So so I look at. It, I think it was uh, I think uh, in uh, August of 2016 was when. I sent you a friend request when I saw your group and... Has it been that long? Out. It's already been like it's been four years almost? Four years. I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and you know, I, I said, I think at that time probably you had, I, I don't know when you started 360 Rumors, at, on Facebook at least, uh, but we'll get into it. But I think it was probably less than a year old and it was very early and, you know, I wish right. you best of luck and I gave you some tips. And we, and we never spoke for three years, you know. So you, you were doing your thing, I was doing my thing. You had the foresight to see, like, that, that uh, number one, this industry would be growing. And uh, this, this person who's, like, actually going to be um, helping in the industry <laughs> around. So you had that, in, that <laughs> no, foresight. I, I, think, I think it was more just because uh, I think anybody that reads your content knows that most of it is in goodwill and so whenever i saw the stuff that you were writing it just felt like you were trying your best to give people the best information and that is so hard to find on the internet these days so i just thought that okay, yes i gotta say you know hi to you and you know wish you the best of luck for what you're doing because one is making money off content is extremely difficult yes and then, um, true as much as 360 is a growing industry uh it's not the most uh, you know profitable industry that exists in the world so not yet uh, but you know, eventually it will get yet. there it will get there <laughs> i'm fully confident about that there you go there you go uh it, tell me something about yourself like you know who sure. is michael and like if you had to describe yourself in like say sure. five sentences how would you do that yeah yeah so basically i i'm like i'm, I'm an immigrant here in the u.s and i've been a photographer since 2007 and then in 2015, I switched to 360 cameras and it's never been the same ever since. Completely changed my view. Okay. That's like and the one you... sentence version of my life history. <laughs> <laughs> so your life began in 2015. Before no, that, yeah, was yeah, just, yeah, yeah, I was, it, it I was, was just, right. Yeah, you just existed, but your life started in 2015 yes. when you saw the 360 camera. So before that's 360 and after 360, you could put it that way. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, uh, you know, how, why did you come to the U.S.? I mean, where do you come from? Uh -huh. uh, and, you know, how did you discover... Uh, I mean, let's, let's speak about, you know, when you came to the U.S. and why did you come here and mm -hmm. kind of what got you into 360 rumors. Obviously, you saw the, the cameras that got you, but... Yeah, so so I was I was born in the Philippines, and that's where I grew up. And I came here just before, um, just after college, and looking for uh, opportunities. And um, in two thousand seven, I began 
photography because uh, it it was a way for me to document like our family life because we had I had just gotten married and we were having kids or or we planned to have kids <laughs> so and and I some of my fondest memories were like of looking through my kids album like as a uh, like growing up and seeing my brother and I grow up and I I I like what looking through those that album and seeing those happy memories and I wanted to do that for my kids and my family so I decided to learn photography um actually I decided to learn video first and then only okay. later on did, did, did I decide, oh, you know what? I should learn photography first. So that's what happened. And that, that was in 2000, maybe 2006. And then 2007 was when I got started to get really serious about it. And yeah. what was your first camera? Oh, uh, I, I have it here. I still have it. It's actually... Um, really? Yeah, a Minolta okay. Z1. Dimash. It's a bridge camera. 10x zoom. Okay. Constant f two eight uh, aperture, uh, nice. but uh, yeah, I I still have it. It still works actually. <laughs> I mean, the one good thing about these like sort of uh, you know DSLR kind of cameras is just that like they actually work, you know, uh, for a long period of time. Uh, like the physical cameras, you know, they're not the uh, I don't know what you call them, like mirror based cameras. Is that what you no, call them? No, no, I, I get what you mean. I have an old. Um, Nikon N90. It's a film camera. And it still works. Right. <laughs> it still works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just like those, those things just keep working. You know, it's not like our iPhones that need an upgrade every three, four years. Exactly. It's just you know, it's exhausting in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and one of the things that I really liked about you, and I think a lot of people probably don't see this, is that I remember seeing, I remember a video of you creating a 360 video of you eating hot wings. Oh. <laughs> Yes, I remember that. Yes. <laughs> and I just thought that, you know, I think people don't give you enough credit for the kind of like quality content. I mean, it's, 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 it's entertaining as well as, you know, and then recently you made the video of, you know, the, the, your kids punching you, the freeze frame stuff. So I think, you know, there's a lot of good stuff and I'm pretty sure, you know, it's been four years since we spoke, and then in the next four years, you know, I, I would probably not even get a chance to talk to you. So, uh, you know, it's definitely going to be that way. Well, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, if I maybe if I keep taking risks, <laughs> then one day, <laughs> like, uh, where's Nick? <laughs> uh, last I saw him, he was like uh, taking off in this like parachute or something. <laughs> <laughs> So how do you get these ideas? Yeah, I, I get them because kind of like just, um, actually, I'm not sure where I get these ideas. How do you get the hot wings idea? Let's, let's the get what? the hot remember wings? how you, how, yeah. Yeah, because sometimes it's like inspired by my life, but also just kind of randomness. Like, you know, like, um, uh, like for example, like that hot wings idea. I mean, we go to, we eat out often. We eat at restaurants right. often. So, I mean, obviously, there's like some of that. But uh, the idea to to eat spicy food and get it on VR one eighty, um, I, I yeah, I it's just I I, I don't know. <laughs> just like the weird stuff in my life. It's like I don't live a super interesting life. So, what's the most interesting thing I can think of? To get out of it, I guess okay. if you could put so, it that so way. VR, VR food reviews is the next big thing. Was that VR food I reviews? Said VR food reviews. Oh yeah, that's no. that's an interesting niche. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. So I think you know uh, a couple of things that uh, really stand out for me with sort of what you know you do is uh, you're very very meticulous, and I know this because I'm sorry, I'm very know, what. Meticulous. Oh, oh yes. So, right. So, and I know this because, you know, we were trying to get you on our platform and it was like, you know, <laughs> you were looking at every single thing like, why is this not working? Why is this not working? Ah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I know that when you, when you go and you review a 360 camera, you have spent your time just going through each and every functionality and each and every 
uh, you know, setting that is there. Right. How did that come? Like, how I, was this something that was a part of you when you were younger? Like, were you a kid who was just like OCD about, you know, lining um, your comments, you know, stuff like that? I mean, is that is that who Michael was as a kid, or is that something you do it because you think it's important for like for specifically 360 rumors, or is that how you are? I, I as think a kid and I up. think for me, Vinit, like for me, the driving force for all for that um, attention to the detail is that I want the information to be reliable. I want it, the information to be correct, and like if I say something, like is this sharper or is this other camera sharper? I want to make sure that when I say it, it is guaranteed to be true, or at least right. there is solid evidence for it. I don't want to okay. just like. You know, say like based on my impression, it's like this other one, and then later on it turns out to be this other one. Meanwhile, you already recommended that other camera, and people already bought that other camera. That for many right, people, right. a camera is not that cheap. It's like three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars more. Yeah. And I want to make sure that when they make a a purchase, that they can rely on the advice. And so I, I take the time to. Uh, make sure to do the tests that I need to do to make sure to really absolutely make sure that what I say is correct. So it does take more time, um, and it, it's kind of like a, a conflict that I feel because YouTube they want you to like push out content as fast as possible, and meanwhile yeah. I'm trying to be as careful as possible. So. <laughs> So I, I, it's a, it's yeah, a tension. Yeah. I, tr I try my right. best. To, I, I usually end up like being a little bit on the slow side, but whatever I, when I put out something, it's going to be correct. So that right, is, right. And I think that's what people kind of respect for the most part is just that some of the stuff you put in, you can kind of close your eyes and kind of say, okay, this, this makes sense. But, you know, just obviously, you know, all of these things are based on, uh, your taste and like your understanding of whatever, how much ever you can understand about the cameras and all of these, some of these 360 cameras are coming from companies that probably nobody else has heard of. You know, I think uh, the cool cam, the, uh, you know, all of these cam cameras are coming from companies that nobody's really heard of. Even Rico, I think for the, before they, they launched the beta, like most people didn't even know that this company existed. Uh, so yeah, think, uh, at least for three, I mean, um, Rico, among DSLRs, the there was space, just a, not, yeah. a very small company. Right. Uh, Pen Rico Pentax is like a tiny percentage of the market. So yeah, and right. once upon a time, there was a company called Insta360 back in 2016. <laughs> no one had heard of it. <laughs> and right. I, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember I, I've that. never I heard remember, of them. Uh, Have you? <laughs> no. Okay. I've never heard of them. Uh, so, so now you know they're they're killing the market. So I think uh, you know you. I think you were one of the one of their very initial champions. I remember you were. That's right. Uh, you were onto their product, and you were yeah. you were very bullish on them. Um, uh, yeah. So I think you know that. So again, the question is: Is that who you are in real life as a kid, or is this something that has like you have developed specifically for yeah, I, three six? I guess as a person, I like to make sure that whatever I say is correct. So I, I, you know, I'm very careful. I guess when I say things that I, you know, I make sure it is correct. That it, there's, right. you know, I, I don't just like throw out words like carelessly. For me, that's very important to me as a as a person. So right. that's 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 something that I that happens to me every day in my life. Yeah, when I was a kid, I guess I was, the other thing is. Um, um, I I like uh, I'm very curious and I like doing experiments and I like asking questions, so um, that's part of um, why my videos are detailed. Because when I when I review something, I, I immediately start thinking of questions. But what about this? But what about that? Then I test this, then I test that, and I test this other one, which leads to another thing and another thing and another thing. That's why I, it ended up being, you know, uh, more detailed, I guess. So, so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you could say that it's you know something that I've I've had as a kid. Yeah, you know, in your thought process, how do you think of three hundred and sixty cameras? Because 
One is you have the passion for 360 cameras, right? Like you have a passion enough where you say that, all right, this is going to be my side hustle. I'm going to spend a lot of time developing content. So there is definitely the passion for it. Uh, but it, from a business perspective, what is your thoughts on, you know, the next, let's say three or four years? Yeah. So that's a, that's a great question. Very complex. Lots of uh, things to talk about there. Um, I guess, just so first start out with 360 cameras like what what's what makes them so different what's the big deal what what i mean what why what's in there for people what's in it for people to try it so uh at the time that i the first time i heard about 360 cameras was in 2015 with the the, the rico theta at that time i already had a lot of experience with um uh photography and i had you know i had another blog uh, that going on and where I was testing different cameras and equipment. I had like literally dozens and dozens of lenses and had like two dozen DSLRs. And so, you know, I, I, Wait, you had, you bought two dozen DSLRs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I already had a lot of experience with, with different, um, cameras and different lenses of all types, anywhere from, you know, ultra wide, fish eye, all the way to telephoto. I mean, I've tried all of them. So okay. when I first tried the, when I first saw the Rico Theta, okay, it's a 360 camera. I kind of saw like well, samples, and this looks interesting. And that's the thing. Even though I was already very experienced, nothing would prepare me for uh, finding out, for discovering what it can do. It can do so much more than what it looks like. I mean, at, um, like at face value, you think it's only a 360 camera. What's the big deal? But actually, for example, uh, you can do like an invisible flying camera effect. No one would yeah. have conceived that effect in 2015. I mean, people knew that you could put it on a tripod uh, that was thin enough, etc. But no one had imagined that it would eventually become an invisible flying camera. So similarly, these days, you know, people see 360 cameras and they think they know what it is about. But actually, there's like way more creative possibilities than they could ever imagine. So so that's okay. so that that because of that, um, I decided that this is such a, a rich, unexplored niche that it is worth getting into. And the other thing is, I was a very big fan of Petapixel and DP review. And I was like eagerly waiting for their reviews on this new camera. Like, wow, this is so exciting. Where I can't wait for DP review to review this. And months came by like, where, where is it? Nothing. And then I, you know, meanwhile, well, Petapixel, I was telling them, hey, did you know that there's this thing that you could do with it? Did you know this? Did you know that? And they were like, they were not responding to my messages, you know? So I thought like, you know, there's this here, there's this new, completely new kind of camera that has so many possibilities and none of the big guys are paying attention to it. So that's why I created 360 Rumors in uh, February of 2016. You know, I mean, we, we can debate 360 cameras uh, for, for a long time. I agree with you on uh, the 360 medium being an extremely creative medium. Uh, and I just hope that, you know, some of the bigger guys get into it, like the Nikons and the Canons. I mean, if they get into the market, I think it, it changes a little. I mean, it changes the sustainability of the 360 camera market, because I think at this point, uh, you have Insta360, you have Rico and GoPro. Uh, GoPro. These are the three big, big, I mean, I would say big, but it, like Insta360 is still a startup uh, in hardware. Uh, so it, it just becomes a little difficult for them. I remember one really good camera. I mean, of all the cameras that I really liked, I really liked one of those cameras where you could create a video by kind of like tracking and you would do an auto track. I think it was one of the first cameras that had auto track and you could like, it was like you could create like a really nice normal video from a 360 video. Oh, oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I think the first one to feature that 
I'm not sure if it was Rilo or Insta360. Oh, Rilo, Rilo, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. That's the one, Rilo, Rilo's a great company. It's just that, um, well, it, it. I think their development was a little bit slow right. in terms of right. like um, supporting apps. I mean, platforms equally. So that's why, like, you know, that that was the issue with them. Yeah. And besides the price, yeah. Right. So I think that 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 I thought kind of was interesting because. Uh, as soon as you can like take a 360 video and create a good high quality normal viewing video that is that has all these angles and you know can capture things really quickly uh, that becomes interesting right and I don't know I think I don't know if three, Insta360 has that feature uh, after they saw the Rilo camera but uh, I thought that was one of the things that I felt was was pretty remarkable. yes and and actually you you have a we have the, an excellent point there, Vinit. Because, and the the cool thing is that right now in 2020, the 360 cameras are good enough to replace my action cams. In other words, last year, for example, even as recently as last year, I ha I still use a GoPro Hero and DJI Osmo Action. I still have them, but now because the One R is really good and um, it has a microphone input and ha I have a way of getting clear audio using a you know a Rode Wireless Go attached to it. Um, I I now ha I don't find any reason to shoot with a GoPro here unless I'm doing something like yeah. rugged stuff or whatever. But for everyday vlogging, I use the One R, not because I'm a 360. Uh, channel guy or a, a 360 reviewer but because it is a better tool when I shoot with it with a one R I know I'm gonna get the action I don't have to worry if I'm out of the frame or anything like that yeah, I can get yeah. b-rolls instantly even while I'm talking or, I mean there's like I I, I I choose to use the one R yeah, it because it's a better vlogging tool yeah yeah and I think that that that's where I think the shift is going to happen. You know, I think the shift is going to happen when uh, you can capture the entire scene and then you can pick very quickly the scenes that you want and create a video out of it, like a normal video. Because in the end, to the consumption of a 360 video is a little tedious. Yes. Unless you have a very good high quality. I, your I agree 100%. Um, yeah, it's not right, the so I, the I, growth I, there here is not in so much in the 360 video per se, but it's in the reframed right. video. Yes, yes. So I think that's where I think we agree on. So that's great. We agree on something. That's good. Uh, so you know, one of the things that what I, I believe you've done a great job of is building these like Facebook groups for any. I've seen that any new camera comes, you're the first guy to go create a Facebook group and then kind of like do the whole like you know you know uh, spreading uh, making the web of uh, the Facebook groups grow really well and I, I really appreciate it because I run one Facebook group uh, and I almost like almost don't run it because it's so difficult to like continuously monitor spam and you know people responding and you know there's a lot of work involved in managing a Facebook group and keeping it alive yes uh, so how do you manage it that's number one uh, and b is i asked you this question uh, but do you have a sense of how many people do you have on those groups combined maybe yeah i if you, <laughs> i don't know because i've managed ahead. like like so many groups like maybe like 20 right. different groups but the largest ones that i manage are are around ten thousand each a little more than that so those are the gopro Fusion, the Insta360. No, no, I don't manage that. I mean, I'm a, a moderator for that, but I don't own that. There's the uh, the the virtual tour group, uh, the MeSphere group. Those are like ten thousand, uh, more than ten thousand uh, users each. So, but uh, the the key I found is to get the help of your friends. So, like for example, there are people whom I trust. And I can make them moderators, and um, once they're moderators, they can they can help like help me manage those those group groups. And I don't even look at those groups as my groups; I just consider as the, okay. them as groups. 
that you know I just create the group because I believe that creating a community uh, around the camera is is what yeah, one of the things important. that will help yeah. it grow. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah, I think also like you know, I I see a lot of questions like very specific questions about cameras and how to use it and you know everyone from you know a beginner to an expert uh, has has the ability to help someone uh, buy and make a purchasing decision. So uh, I think it's a it's a it's a great uh, great way to spread the idea of 360 cameras because otherwise it will be very difficult to make a decision. Yeah. If you just see. You know, if you just go to the the Quando website, I, I, I don't know how you spe- how you pronounce it, but that's which how you site? Pronounce it. The Quando. Oh, Kandao. Kandao. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. It's it's not it's not the most pleasing website to put in a couple thousand dollars. In, yeah, uh-huh. you you know there are even like worse websites. Let's put it that way. <laughs> that's, I'm not gonna mention names. But the problem is, yeah. like these guys, they're really smart in terms of like their engineering, yeah. and they yeah. they know like how to make cameras and all the technology and whatever. But in terms of you know marketing and explaining it to the customers and reaching people and explaining the benefits to them, they need improvement. So yeah, yeah. I think I think Insta360 kind of does the both really well. Yeah, they, yeah. Insta three hundred and sixty has done a great excited. job, and that's that's kind of their yeah. their their ace in their their sleeve. Yeah, the uh, marketing. Their marketing is really strong. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And the other thing that I wanted to ask with uh, with sort of what you're doing is, uh, you know, I've been a part of a couple of panorama groups, uh, you know, three hundred and sixty panorama groups, and uh, I, I sometimes I just feel like you know. When someone is a part of something for such a long time, they have extremely strong opinions about things and are unwilling to change. And I've seen you sometimes, you know, post things like, "Please be nice to everybody," you know, stop like, you know, stop like, don't say bad things and stop criticizing. Like you, you put that as like a comment for the whole group to see. So, you know, what are your thoughts about that? Like, you know, managing sort of bad act- actors in the group. Uh, especially, especially when these people are extremely experienced, because my, my my sense has been that it's generally the people who have like 10, 15 years of experience in doing something that you know they're just I think frustrated to see the lack of uh, I wouldn't say intellect, but the lack of knowledge, effort. Some of the people are yeah, knowledge and also the effort, right? Some people just come and say, "How do I do this? I can't do it," you know, and. And you know, and sometimes people are just like, just figure it out. You know, we all did yeah. it. Yeah, I, know? I, I, I for, so you're right. Um, uh, that is an issue. And um, one thing is, I want to. We're still a very small community. The 360 industry is a very small community, and there are so many people who are new to it. And I want to uh, let it grow first. And so to make that happen. I try to make the groups as welcoming as possible, and that is why I'm very strict about um, enforcing a kind of like a no disrespect or d- no rudeness rule. Because I've seen what the what's happened if you don't have a rule like that. Like there are groups, for example, where they have a lot of knowledge in it and members who are extremely experienced, but when when right, anyone right. Suggests an idea or asks a question, you know, it's like a contest to make this makes this person look stupid or something. It's like trying yeah. to make themselves more superior yeah. by by putting down this person, and it has a chilling effect on on people asking questions. And I don't like that. And so that's why in the groups that I manage, I make sure that people feel welcome, that you know, people don't feel like. You know, there's there's not a dumb question, so to speak. Now, having said that, it is also true that there are people who um, don't really uh, make enough of an effort. Um, like they just yeah. ask a question and and want everything handed to them on a silver silver platter. And to balance that, what I've tried to encourage is to create kind of like facts. Uh, you know, frequently asked questions. Um, Things like that, resources that we pin to the, you know, 
top of the page or something like that or it's there in the group so that people can just say hey have you checked out this like that so that way mm -hmm. you know you get the best of both worlds on one hand it's not rude on the other hand you know it's there for them to look at and you don't necessarily have to give them everything got it, got it. and you know we know that this is kind of your side hustle right so uh how do you how do you plan your day you know now i think it's easier now now that you're working from home but uh how how what's what's like a typical day well in, well for me in your life, in your life for like? me the the sacrifice comes with less sleep <laughs> it's like yeah and like literally i mean um i i sleep like maybe only like generally four hours a day and that's it's not because of like I, that's norm my normal sleep time i used to sleep like eight hours a day at least and now it's been cut and that's that's where i gave up that time because uh where else will i find it and um and like i can show you like pictures of how i looked before I started all this and now and you can see I've aged a lot. You, you, should, you should send that to me. I'm going to yeah, put it up. I, I will on, do that. Like screen. I look yeah. like a like a little I mean I every day I used to wherever I go people will say, "Hey, I thought you were like in your 20s or something. I thought you were like in college or something." <laughs> people don't say that anymore. I don't I don't get <laughs> carded anymore when I buy liquor. <laughs> no, yeah. And I got lots of white hair. Oh my god. <laughs> 360 room is taking your life. Yeah, your well, mind, but it's for know, a I good think, purpose. It's fun. It's fun. I think. Are there people that you know that you have met in these groups or who you think kind of think similarly? Like you know, hey, you know, these guys are all kind of gunning for, build, you know, expanding the market. You know, building, getting more people in. Yeah, I, I think and, uh, I think uh, Ben uh, is also doing the same thing, like right? encouraging uh, the growth of the industry and. Um, he's done a fantastic job of uh, doing that. Um, and I think also as a company, um, Insta360 has also done that. I think um, yeah. by itself, it has contributed to a significant part of the growth of the industry as a whole, yeah. like by collaborating with, you know, um, the, the regular vloggers who, don't, who before this, had not been shooting in 360 at all and now thanks to their all their efforts now a few more people know about it so like right now when i go shoot with a 360 camera outside you know and someone asks hey what's that then someone else says like oh that's a 360 camera i don't i don't have to be the one to say like oh it's a 360 camera like people kind of already know like a few enough kind of like getting there I know, I know that you have been experimenting with FPVs, uh, drones, and all that stuff. Uh, and I remember doing drone racing back in. Wow! Really? Okay. You were experimenting with it. I don't know how much you've gotten into it. I started a little bit of it uh, because um, I thought I saw the potential for um, 360 and FPV to go to get to be to work together. Yeah. Um, if you put a 360 camera on an FPV drone, it can capture really amazing videos, yes. and so that's that's yes. why I yes. I wanted to learn more about it. And um, I still have a lot of FPV gear. It's just that I haven't had the time. I've been like super super busy. I mean, if I have a breather, then maybe. Um, I mean, just recently I got another drone that I really want to test out, but <laughs> right now at this moment. I, I'm like, oh, <laughs> super busy. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you, man. And uh, so before we end this, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. One is I want to talk about the new course that you have. Uh, a little bit of a plug for you. Um, because I have started the course. Um, I don't know when I'm going to finish it. Uh, but it is a pretty intense course. It teaches people the sort of in and out of how to create very beautiful uh, images for virtual tours. Um, not necessarily virtual tours, but just really beautiful images, high quality. Um, and, you know, I obviously need a very good camera to get there. You know, I mean, my, my camera 
such well, bad. As long as it has manual exposure, I think you know there's always a potential there. Yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it does. But, uh, so, um, mm-hmm. so, so, so I, I want you know I want you to talk about it in terms of uh, you know what is the uh, I won't say purpose because the purpose is quite clear. But I think what is like, what is a an email or a message that you would get from a customer that would make you go, "Wow, this is what I was expecting when I made this course." Like, what would be that reaction be? Which is, I don't know if you have that sense. Um, but so, so the the course is you know, for those who haven't heard about it. It's called the Virtual Tour Edge HQ Method class, and that's because. I call it virtual tour edge because the market right now is there's a lot of new uh, virtual tour photographers and they're all offering kind of similar services, similar photos, similar everything. So what can you do to make yourself different? And one way that you can do, uh, make yourself different or to stand out from your from the market is by delivering much higher image quality uh, from your 360 camera. And of course, it helps to have a, a good camera. But even with a more modest camera, like the Mi Sphere, for example, which is like you can buy it like a hundred bucks from Ch- in China, you know. But even yeah. that camera can rival the quality yeah. of a camera like the Z1, which is like a thousand dollars. You just need to edit it, and process it, and shoot it, and edit it correctly. So that's the whole rationale for the for the course. And, and the idea is that. By upgrading your technique, you can have bigger impact on your images than just simply buying another camera. Um, and in terms of like the, the reception, it's been very positive. I'm happy to say, um, and I, I've gotten emails where people are saying like, "Wow, this is like amazing that I just tried it and it works." Um, and people have been uh, very happy about it. Yeah, so uh, I I hope to expand the content even further. I will be adding uh, DSLRs to the course so that if you want the ultimate in image quality, then I'm going to show you how to do that. I think uh, it, it's a good course. As for, for wherever I reach, I think I'm at I think fourth or fifth chapter. I think uh, so. I'll I'll be p- posting a review of it on our YouTube channel, which has 400 subscribers. Uh, and uh, we'll see how that goes, but I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited about it. And uh, thanks for coming on onto this uh, video. Uh, this is our first video, so and uh, even, and just for know, uh, for those of you who are bigger. watching who are uh, already familiar with 360 cameras, um, FYI, Vinit has been instrumental in um, like expanding the 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 capabilities of teleport me and p360 so that with their help i was able to update the 360 camera comparison tool on 360 rumors and so now you can compare uh cameras side by side up to 32 oh man thanks a lot thanks, man thanks for the thanks plug thanks to these guys that's, that's very nice for you. thanks a lot uh yeah i mean so uh you know i'll talk about what we do maybe later on um but uh, thanks a lot for using our tool. It was uh, it was tough to get you on it because you had a lot of requirements, and we were just like, okay, one more bug, let's go fix it, you know. And <laughs> but I think you know, in the end, it was totally worth it because now you know it, it is kind of like a stamp of approval, which is like, okay, at least we uh, we could get you on board, and you know, it, it speaks of at least the hard work that we have tried because we always hated the web. We were like, we are never gonna do web. We're never gonna do this. We're just gonna be mobile. So it took us a while to get there, um, but I'm happy that we are there. And thanks a lot for your help and in, in getting us there. No, thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate everything you've done for the 360 industry.